Hallelujah. I want to sing all about it. Hallelujah. I want to shout all about it. Hallelujah. I can't live without it. Praise God. Praise God. Now I'm living in a new creation. Now I'm drinking at the well of salvation. Now there is no condemnation. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to sing all about it. Hallelujah. I want to shout all about it. Hallelujah. I can't live without him. Praise God. Praise God. Now I'm living as a new creation. Now I'm drinking at the well of salvation. Now there is no condemnation. Praise God. Praise God. And I'm taking your thumbs up, Miss Joy and Yolinda, that you are hearing me. Are you hearing me? Glory to his marvelous name. Let me know so that I don't just go on and waste everybody's time. Sounding really good, Yolinda says. Okay, thank you for the report. Praise you, Jesus, on this November 5th. This is voting day, y'all. Don't forget to vote. Don't forget to vote. And I pray that you will vote for righteousness. Vote for righteousness. Vote for people who will be honest. Honest. That's what we need in government. Transparent. Okay? That's who we all should vote for. <clears throat> On this November 5th, we will be reading from Ezekiel chapter 12, clear through to part of 14. Quite a bit, and it is really something. And this whole reading this morning, uh, I don't know how many times fire is mentioned. And it is mentioned as a punishment and a judgment. Perhaps California should read Ezekiel, the whole book, because they're almost proud of what they have put forth that's pure sin all over the world, through their movies, through their lives. Not to say the rest of America is saintly, but we really have had a hotbed there. And that is where the fires are. Now, am I saying it's judgment of God? <clears throat> That's for everybody to go to the Lord with themselves. Everybody, you, you question the Lord. I'm just a reader, okay? But I don't read stupidly, I don't think. I mean, I do read and say, wow, we better consider this here. So let's see what Ezekiel has for us this morning in chapter 12. Now the word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, you dwell in the midst of a rebellious house, which has eyes to see, but does not see, and ears to hear, but does not hear, for they are re a rebellious house. Good morning, Mel and Miss Kathy. Therefore, son of man, prepare your belongings for captivity and go into captivity by day in their sight. Now, Ezekiel is going to be used as a great example again. You shall go from your place into captivity to another place in their sight. It may be that they will consider. Oh, praise the Lord. That's what we're hoping though they are a rebellious house. By day, you shall bring out all your belongings in their sight as though going into captivity. And at evening, you shall go in their sight like those who go into captivity. <clears throat> so we know that people showed up all the time to see what was happening with Ezekiel, okay? Uh, the Lord wouldn't ask him to do this if there wasn't going to be an audience to see him do it. Dig through the wall in their sight. Now, that's always been <clears throat> something I've questioned. I wish Scott were here to say, what do you mean dig? <laughs> dig. Okay, dig through the wall in their sight and carry your belongings out through it. So we're talking 
about a big hole. <clears throat> In their sight you shall bear them on your shoulders and carry them out at twilight, and you shall cover your face so that you cannot see the ground. For I have made you a sign to the house of Israel. So I did as I was commanded. I brought out my belongings by day as though going into captivity. And at evening I dug through the wall with my hand. I brought them out at twilight and I bore them on my shoulder in their sight. And in the morning, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said to you, What are you doing? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, This burden concerns the prince in Jerusalem and all the house of Israel who are among them. Say, I am a sign to you, as I have done, so shall it be done to them. They shall be carried away into captivity. And the prince who is among them shall bear his belongings on his shoulder at twilight and go out. They shall dig through the wall to carry them out through it. He shall cover his face so that he cannot see the ground with his eyes. I will also spread my net over him, and he shall be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylon, to the land of the Chaldeans, yet he shall not see it, though he shall die there. How about that? Think that over. His face was covered. I will scatter to every wind all who are around him to help him and all his troops, and I will draw out the sword after them. Then they shall know that I am the Lord when I scatter them among the nations and disperse them throughout the countries, but I will spare a few of their men from the sword, from famine, and from pestilence that they may declare all their abominations among the Gentiles wherever they go. Then they shall know that I am the Lord. Because, of course, they're going to try to fight against that, and they're going to try to get out of it, and they're not going to get out of it. God's going to make them go out as captives. That's how he can say, and then they will know that I am the Lord. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, eat your bread with quaking, and drink your water with trembling and anxiety. Wow, that's a terrible time. And say to the people of the land, Thus says the Lord God to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the land of Israel. They shall eat their bread with anxiety and drink their water with dread so that her land may be emptied of all who are in it. Oh, and I thought, how would you like to be the last one leaving? That would be a very scary sight because of the violence of all those who dwell in it. Then the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste and the land shall become desolate and you shall know that I am the Lord. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, what is this proverb that you people have? about the land of Israel, which says, the days are prolonged and every vision fails. Tell them, therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will lay this proverb to rest, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. But say to them, the days are at hand and the fulfillment of every vision. In other words, tell them, no, all of that 
is going to happen right now. For no more shall there be any false vision or flattering divination within the house of Israel, for I am the Lord. I speak, and the word which I speak will come to pass. It will no more be postponed. For in your days, O rebellious house, I will say the word and perform it, says the Lord God. Again, <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, look, the house of Israel is saying, quote, The vision that he sees is for many days from now, and he prophesies of times far off. In other words, hopefully we're going to get to live our lives and die before all that happens. And, and that's not far-fetched. The Americans and all the, all the Christians of the world are saying that in a form. Ooh, boy, we hope we go up in the rapture <clears throat> before any of these end time <clears throat> things happen. Isn't that what we say? Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, none of my words will be postponed anymore. But the word which I speak will be done, says the Lord God. Chapter 13 of Ezekiel. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who prophesy. And say to those who prophesy out of their own heart, Hear the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit <clears throat> and have seen nothing. O Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the desert. You have not gone up into the gaps to build a wall for the house of Israel to stand in battle on the day of the Lord. They have envisioned futility and false divination, saying, Thus says the Lord, But the Lord has not sent you, not sent them, yet they hope that the word may be confirmed. Have you not seen a futile vision? And have you not spoken false divination? You say, the Lord says, but I have not spoken. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have spoken nonsense and envisioned lies, therefore I am indeed against you, says the Lord God. My hand will be against the prophets who envision futility and who divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, nor be written in the record of the house of Israel, nor shall they enter into the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord God, because indeed, because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, when there is no peace. And one builds a wall, and they plaster it with untempered mortar. Now, there's a bunch of waste of money and time. Say to those who plaster it with untempered mortar that it will fall. There will be flooding rain, and you, O oh, great hailstones, shall fall. And a stormy wind shall tear it down. Surely when the wall has fallen, will it not be said to you, Where is the mortar with which you plastered it? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, I will cause a stormy wind to break forth in my fury. And I listened to a quick weather report a few days back 
that said there was going to be 100 miles an hour winds in California. I don't know if that really happened. I didn't hear the follow-up. But can you imagine that? With a roaring fire going. I will cause a stormy wind to break forth in my fury, and there shall be a flooding rain in my anger and great hailstones in fury to consume it. So I will break down the wall you have plastered with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that its foundation will be uncovered. It will fail and you shall be consumed in the midst of it. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath on the wall and on those who have plastered it with untempered mortar. And I will say to you, the wall is no more, nor are those who plastered it. Not only is the wall gone, those foolish workers are gone. That is, the prophets of Israel who prophesy concerning Jerusalem and who see visions of peace for her when there is no peace, says the Lord God. Likewise, son of man, set your face against the daughters of your people who prophesy out of their own heart, prophesy against them, and say, Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the women who sew magic charms on their sleeves and make veils for the heads of people of every height to hunt souls. Will you hunt the souls of my people? and keep yourselves alive? And will you profane me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread, killing people who should not die and keeping people alive who should not live by your lying to my people who listen to lies? Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against your magic charms by which you hunt souls there like birds. I will tear them from your arms and let the souls go, the souls you hunt like birds. <clears throat> and the biggest gathering of occult people is in California. They're out there proclaiming curses. I mean, this is not far-fetched that we're reading here. I will also tear off your veils and deliver my people out of your hand, that they shall no longer be as prey in your hand. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. <clears throat> and how many people do we have walking around America now in a veil? from the eyes down. Because with lies you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and you have strengthened the hands of the wicked so that he does not turn from his wicked way to save his life. Therefore, you shall no longer envision futility nor practice divination, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Chapter 14 of Ezekiel. Now some of the elders of Israel came to me and sat before me. Oh, take in Kathy's graphics. Oh, Kathy, you just got beautiful once of all of this. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts. Doesn't have to be one sitting out for you to look at in space somewhere. <clears throat> They've set up their idols in their hearts. 
and have put before them that which causes them to stumble into iniquity. Should I let myself be inquired of at all by them? And the natural answer would be, no, I don't think maybe you ought to do that, Lord. <clears throat> Therefore, speak to them and say to them, thus says the Lord God, every one of the house of Israel who sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity and then comes to the prophet I, the Lord, will answer him who comes according to the multitude of his idols, that I may seize the house of Israel by their heart, because they are all estranged from me by their idols. Therefore say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, Repent! Repent! Turn away from your idols and turn your faces away from all your abominations. <clears throat> In an America, that could be many things that don't even look like sin to us. I mean, how about that you worship sports first? Number one, as your time. I mean, you wouldn't miss, you wouldn't miss a football game, basketball game, golf match, name it. Put the name in. Bowling tournament. That's your idol. You've got that before the Lord. If they schedule a game on Sunday morning, you're, you're not going to go to church. You're going to go to the game. You tell me that's not an idol? <sighs> Repent. Nothing wrong with going to a football game. Just don't put it up as number one, your idol. For anyone of the house of Israel or of the strangers who dwell in Israel, who separates himself from me. In other words, you did it yourself. You separated yourself from me and sets up his idols in his heart and puts before him what causes him to stumble into iniquity, then comes to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. I will set my face against that man and make him a sign and a proverb, and I will cut him off from the midst of my people. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet is induced to speak anything, I, the Lord, have induced that prophet and I will stretch out my hand against him and destroy him from among my people Israel. And they shall bear their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be the same as the punishment of the one who inquired. Good morning, Heather. Good morning, Miss Bonnie. Good morning, Randy. Do I want to tag her? Sure enough. And they shall bear their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be the same as the punishment of the one who inquired, <clears throat> that the house of Israel may no longer stray from me, nor be profaned any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people, and I may be their God says the Lord God. So listen up, America, and all you other countries. Listen up. This is a fearsome chapter here, 12, 13, 14 of Ezekiel, but we're doing the same sins, so we need to listen up. All right, we move right along to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews 7. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, or Jerusalem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham, returning from the slaughter of the kings, and blessed him, 
And just take that in. Where, where, where does it say Abraham was coming from? Oh, a huge slaughter. Many people slaughtered dead. Blood everywhere. But he meets Melchizedek, and Melchizedek blesses him. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. First being translated king of righteousness. And then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace, shalom, comes from that, peace, without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God. In other words, nobody knows, and they're all saying, this guy arrived. Uh, where was he born? A supernatural arriving and remains a priest continually. And notice what he blesses him. This is where we begin to hear about a tithe. It, you know, we just made our pledges at the church that I attend, and I upped mine $7, which doesn't seem like much, but the deal was it's obedience. Because I remembered, way, I mean, I was delinquent way back. Sammy and I got just a tiny little raise in our Social Security about this big, a couple dollars. But I forgot to tithe on that. So I corrected that, okay? Oh, y'all, tithe. The first tenth doesn't belong to you or me. It's God's. It's not yours to spend. Be faithful. We've got to be faithful to get America turned around. Now, consider how great this man was, to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoils. I mean, Abraham went right at it. Abraham said, whoa, wait a minute here. We need to give this guy 10% uh, of everything we got here. We've got all these, all these spoils we brought with us. Hey, separate that. Let's, let's give a gift here. And indeed, those who are of the sons of Levi, Levi, we would say, over there they say Levi, who receive the priesthood have a commandment to receive tithes from the people according to the law, that is, from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham. Now, now, just think about that a minute. He took that tenth. He knew, he, he knew it was his. Uh, what does that example tell you? He received the tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. Now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here, mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them, of whom it is witnessed that he lives. Even Levi, Levi who receives tithes, paid tithes through Abraham, so to speak, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Levi hadn't been born yet. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise, according to the order of Melchizedek? and not be called according to the order of Aaron. For the priesthood being changed of necessity, there is also a change of the law. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from which no man has officiated at the altar. 
for it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood, and it is yet far more evident if, in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who has come, not according to the law, of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. For he testifies from Psalm 110, verse 4, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. Wow. <clears throat> now that is something to be gone over by yourself, particularly if you're not tithing and you don't feel any conviction to do so, then it would be good for you to read all that and, and get it straight, how God thinks. All right, we move right along to Psalm 105. We're already into it, so we're picking up with verse 37. 105, 37. He also brought them out with silver and gold. We're talking about the people coming out of Egypt. And there was none feeble among his tribes. He, he healed them all so they could make the trip. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them had fallen upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quail. He brought meat and satisfied them with the bread of heaven. Manna was there every morning, wasn't it? And they went out and gathered it. How would you like that? Hey, I need to go to Publix. Uh, no, just go out in the yard. It's all laying out there in the grass. Just gather what you want. I mean, come on. That's what they did. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise. And Abraham, Abraham, his servant, he brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. He gave them the lands of the Gentiles, and they inherited the labor of the nation, that they might observe his statutes and keep his laws. And what do we have to say about that? Praise the Lord. He took them to a land where they just picked up, just settle down, go ahead and eat, go ahead and drink, plant your crops. This land is yours and I'm giving it to you. And here they are right in front of our faces in 2019, coming by the plane load to Israel every day, being brought by God from the farthest worst places of the earth to the land to live now. They call it making aliyah. Returning to the land to live. Don't miss that miracle that's happening right in our day and age, but enjoy it and magnify the Lord. Okay, let's wrap this up today, y'all, so you can get about your business with Proverbs 27, verse 3. Proverbs 27, verse 3. A stone is heavy, and sand is weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than both of them. Don't listen to a fool. Uh, don't turn on that television for the wrong station. <laughs> Get some truthful news of what's really going on. Let's close in prayer, y'all. Father God, how I want to thank you for your word. I mean, your, what do we say? Your word is precious. Your word has been spoken, and you want to talk about a rock. It shall never change, and it all 
shall come to pass. It will feed us. It is alive. It will fill us with new wine, new oil. And I'm talking spiritually, wine and oil. The other kind just dissipates. But this wine and oil remains in you for your walk, that you can resist temptation and iniquity, which we've just read about in Ezekiel. Oh, what terrible things the Lord had ready because he had given them plenty of time to repent and they didn't. So Lord, please help us to listen to the voice of Holy Spirit and to truly repent, to turn away from where we're at, from saying the same old negative, destroying words, from thinking the same old negative, destroying thoughts, and to look to you and to set all those areas of our lives to correct them, to truly correct them. We risk even thinking we're going to live through this day. And what? Go home to judgment? Lord, 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 help us. Wake us up. Wake us up that we don't know what this day brings. We don't know if we'll live till tomorrow. We have faith that we will. We pray that we will. But our futures are in your hands. We are in your hands. And so we come to you, Lord, with thanksgiving. We come to you with faith to praise your name. We ask you, Lord, to bring peace to Israel, to Jerusalem, to bring wisdom to Bibi Netanyahu and all of the rest, right in the midst of this unsettled election. Help them, Lord. We ask that that Iron Dome catch every single rocket in the air, that no life is lost. We ask that you, Lord, push back the enemy, that you cause their lies and threats to fall to the ground. Useless, unanswered. It's you, Lord. You are the one who knows it all. And Lord, we give you our lives today. We ask you to help us repent from the issues and the sins and the iniquities that still trouble us. Some of them we repeat every day, don't we? Oh, I've got a little list that I am just determined to get victory on. I'm determined. Ah, the fear of the Lord is on me. I mean, I'm 80, okay? <laughs> I'm going to face Jesus pretty soon here, one way or the other. And I'm determined. I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what I want to hear you say to me, Jesus. That's what I want to know you're going to say to all these brothers and sisters who've come this morning. So Lord, I lift them up to you. There are people whose names I read are here who are in tough situations right now. There are people who are sick that we declare today they shall be healed because it's already accomplished on the cross. And you know who you are. You know who you are. There are many here today who have a physical or a mental or an emotional uh, wound and they're asking for healing. And we all agree, we all agree, Jesus, that the cross is accomplished. When you cried, it is finished. Healing was there for each and every one of us, no matter what the situation. And so, Lord, we've come today believing that the healing will be there today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We know that your blood washes us clean from all sin. We know that today we can start out totally forgiven 
totally forgiven with Holy Spirit to guide us, to help us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And we shout praises unto you, Lord. We sing praises. Yes, we sing praises. Lift up your voice and sing a new song. Just grab any note and go with it. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Stir up the gifts within you. Stir up that baptism of the Holy Spirit and pray and sing in tongues like you haven't for a long time. It's there. He's there. He's there. Go ahead. Let your spirit pray for things you don't even recognize at the moment. Glory to the Lord. And everyone cried a hearty, Amen, Amen, and went about their jobs and their lives and their schooling and housework, whatever it is, with joy, with singing, with praises, and determined to give this tongue to the Lord for words of His and not our destructive ways. Amen? Amen.